Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Stationeers. So, there has been a hubbub of activity in my uh, Discord channel about uh, different IC logic. So what I'm going to do in this episode is showcase just that. Um, so what we're going to do is set up all of the neat little wiring that I have already set up, but in uh, integrated circuits. Uh, integrated circuit chips. Um, and that will cut down on a lot of the, um, sort of, hmm, a jumble of cables. I think it will look a little bit simpler. Uh, so I wanted to thank the two people that, uh, contributed to said code. Uh, let's see. We have got both Randy S1214 and Catharsis. Uh, so thank you both for your contributions to this little bit, uh, this whole episode or... Uh, much of this episode is probably going to um, revolve around uh, the input that you had. So thank you for that. Uh, so what we're going to do is move the computer that we have. I guess I don't need a manufacturing circuit board. Let's grab our IC editor. We don't actually need to do the editing over here. Uh, once we program the chip, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, where the computer is. But sometimes it's nice to troubleshoot. Um, okay, so we are going to have to manufacture a chip and a housing for each of our LED systems. And then I'm also going to change it to not use network analyzers. So actually, let's make uh, two chips, two housings while I'm here. And we'll set both of these up on IC logic, which is quite nice. You know what? There is some soybean left in my reagent processor. Let me uh, grab that soybeans out. Um, I also have a lot of other input, uh, but uh, that might have to wait until I am done with this. I don't want to multitask so much that I drop the ball on anything. So there is a way, there's enough inputs. Uh, the integrated circuit can handle up to six inputs. So there would be enough inputs to combine four LEDs into one circuit integrated circuit chip but the only problem is the housing only has two inputs so if I did combine both the vitals and the Atmo uh, monitoring what it would end up happening is it would combine the uh, it would combine more than just the data it would combine those two networks together so I have to keep them separate unfortunately which means I have to double up the amount of housing and logic. Um, if you don't care, uh, then you could do it the other way. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it doesn't really matter. Basically, I'm saying I'm going to have to set up two integrated circuits, one for each uh, big battery. Um, it's theoretically possible to set up one for both, but the issue is, you know, it gets uh, combined and sloppy. All right, so while we wait for the other housing to construct, I'm going to run over here and set up my circuit. Uh, let's put it, uh, I guess, here. It's going to be really, really sloppy uh, for now, the way it's laid out. And then I'll put the extra... Um, chips and, and housing and all that in my backpack so that I don't have to return back over here. All right. So I've shown integrated circuits once before, but uh, I'll do a little primer again if you are unfamiliar with what's going on. Uh, I think the first thing I need to do is get some regular cables and maybe paint them green. So let me grab some regular cables. Uh, truth be told, hmm, I might not actually need uh, more cable coils. Let me, uh, because what we'll be doing is removing the old tracking, which includes a lot of these cable coils, and reducing it down tremendously. Uh, so let me just strip out a lot of this cabling here. So the benefit, oh, one of the one of the uh, hidden benefits of this project is we get to save a lot of cables and we get to not have um, so much of our network inside of frames, which is uh, another really 
very beneficial thing. All of these logic readers and writers are now going to be useless. I'm gonna, I guess they're nicely stacked there. I just don't want to lose them. And I will trim out as much of these cables. I'm probably gonna actually have to remove the frame to get it all. Uh, we're also going to be able to remove the cable analyzer. What I'm going to do is grab the uh, power required from the battery. Uh, that's going to also add... The only unintended consequence of that is going to add the power controller to power required as well. So it's not just going to be what's downwind of the transformer. It's also going to include the power controller. But that... Uh, the area power controller. But that but that's fine. Um... That just means if there is a battery in the APC that needs charging, uh, temporarily that uh, uh, the power required is going to spike. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's, again, let's get rid of this memory. We don't need that there. Make sure it falls down somewhere I can find it later, and it has. All right, so let's put this integrated circuit chip um, exactly where we're going to want to house it permanently. And that way we won't have to move it around so much. So, uh, I'll just have it smack dab in the center here. That seems a pretty good spot. And then we will wire it up. So there's a lot of extra wiring here. I'm going to clean this up now. Uh, because we don't need all this crazy nonsense anymore. That included the cable analyzer. Uh, let's see. We can also clean up this bit. I don't know why... Sometimes I just, I'm dazed about how remarkably convoluted some of the wiring was. Alright, so this green wire goes all the way up to the vitals, and that leads to the battery. Uh, this green here goes from the APC, so this actually needs to be, oh, that's the data. Yes, okay, that's good. Um, so then this green down here needs to connect to the input. Alright, I understand now what is going on sometimes you just need a little primer of like hey what was I doing how was this laid out All right, so we're almost done rewiring it and it's gonna look the the benefit is it's gonna look a lot cleaner once it's done so now this battery data and power is all hooked up um, yes Okay, uh, so all we need to do is to combine the power and data of the integrated circuits housing here. Something akin to... Let's actually avoid uh, putting it inside the corner of the frames. And that way we have access to the cables always. Uh, rather than sometimes. Uh, so right now I need... What was this B? three-way code no it would be a junction but I didn't set it up like that another corner and another corner all right so now that integrated housing is all squared away uh, the next thing we need to do is have some fries right just make sure we're not hungry there we go uh, let's label this so this is for the IC housing for uh, vitals and that way we're going to be able to keep track of it separately uh, from... There is a little bit of a housing over here. And I should label this housing as well. So that I, I know what this is. This is solar tracking housing. Because they're both on the same network now. And I don't want to code the wrong device. Uh, because that would probably break solar tracking entirely. Alright, the next thing is to wire up this computer so that we can program our nifty little program. Now, Catharsis um, wrote a little program to include uh, both of the batteries and all four of the LEDs on one network. The only problem is it um, combines um, purple and green together in a way I don't want. And then Randy... Um, wrote a little program to do it so that it uh, doesn't combine. Uh, I have to modify the program a teeny bit, not not a whole lot, just changing one little variable. But let's go ahead and uh, get that all set up here. So I will paste this in and then explain what's going on. Let's see, clear, 
paste. So what this is saying is, and let's change this to D0, D1, and D2. Um, confirm. Okay. If we go back to edit it, it's saying that the required LED is D0, the charge LED is D1, and the battery is D2. Alright, so let's get that laid out correctly. So charge required will be vitals, uh, power usage LED, and then this will be vitals battery LED, and this will be vitals battery. Those are the inputs. D0, as you can see here, it's written D0, D0 D1, D2. Uh, originally it was 1, 2, and 3 because 0 was for the cable analyzer, but I, I can get rid of that bit. Alright, so now all the inputs are set up, and the way this program runs is it is saying... Um, Create an alias for color set, mode set, which is the LEDs, uh, actual power and battery charge. These are the variables that we want to print out. Um, this sets it to 2, which is green, and mode, which is um, wattage. And then this is the setup. It's setting the color, it's setting the mode, it's setting the color and mode for both the required and charge LEDs. And then once this program runs, it's grabbing the battery's charge and battery's uh, power actual and setting the LEDs to charge and power actual, and that's all it does. And for us to write this, we just hit export, and then flick this on. So the little chip is 826 bytes, and the way we know this is going to work is if I flick this computer off, Okay, so the battery just fully charged, and that went up to full. And if I flick this computer off, it should drop the power usage by 200, because computers use 200, and that exactly works. That is perfect. Uh, so now, all of the LEDs logic is in this little circle, uh, this little housing here. Um, yeah, I would, I would have to say it is uh, definitely more simple to look at. Uh, now that I've shown both ways, I'm just going to use the integrated circuit way because it is quicker. And um, now all we have to do is set up purple to run the same. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and disassemble this logic writing. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, I'll grab the other IOs. I might want these IOs sometime in the future, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll just plop them here. We can have them if we need them, and if we don't need them, then whatever, we can recycle them. Uh, the other, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of cabling involved. Uh, the other thing we can disassemble is the analyzer, which is here. And where did I put the original analyzer? Did I just let it drop? I see it right outside here. All right, uh, we've got logic memory. I'm gonna put this out here too, so we don't forget it. Uh, now, to strip out a lot of the purple cabling that is gonna be entirely unnecessary. And color it, uh, color my cables purple. Uh, so temporarily, I'm gonna have probably some um, power shortages in my Atmo from rewiring this. should be a junction as you can see the transformer is uh, currently off uh, Wow we are over 50 cables let's toss those aside all right so now the data that's there now what I could do is just put the IC housing uh, pretty much right where I left the green one. Uh, let's just clean up the rest of this. So what I'm going to need to do is remove some frames. Just so that I can see everything that all the floating cables that I need to strip out. And of course, uh, this purple needs to connect downwards. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually move it a little bit. So that it's not inside of a, a frame's uh, corner. Oh, did I? No. Uh, is this? Okay, yep, that is not inside a frame's corner. Just wanted to make sure I was doing exactly what I was saying I was going to do. 
All right, so now the Atmos should be back on, and it is. Uh, none of that will be reading correctly, because it doesn't have any way to read or write just yet. Um, steel frames. So, we did delete a bunch of steel frames. Oh, also the uh, battery's ba uh, data needs to combine to something. Uh, so now I need to fish around for the frames that I just um, cut out. Sometimes not having uh, an open hand. Okay, there. well, it's fine. Uh, so looking at all this purple jumble, uh, this needs to connect to here, perhaps. So let's get that done. And this makes the battery's data uh, port accessible on the network. Alright, done. And then... This purple goes up to the LEDs. There's probably, there's almost certainly a straighter shot. Uh, but you know what? It looks fine to me. Okay. Uh, the last thing I need to do is put a frame there so I can install my my IC housing. Because the IC housings, as well, I guess I'll just show you. They can't float. You have to initially put them on frames. So I can't just, like, float it there. There's no point of reference. Some things, like pipes, can float, but not everything can float. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our welder. And the sheets. Weld a look. And then we're all set. Now we can grab the IC housing and the chip. And plop it. What was it? Power top? Okay, yep. Plop it right there. Boom and boom. All right. Um, even though this is the only IC housing on the network, it's good to label it. So this is going to be um, Atmo LED IC housing. And let's rename this Vitals LED IC housing. Done and done, and then the last thing we need to do is to wire it up. So I have three wires in my, or three cables, I should call them, in my inventory right now. And I'm about to run out, but then I have a stack of 50 that I discarded, because they only go up to a stack of 50. So here's my stack of 50. Done. Uh, changing the inputs. So, this will be the Atmo power usage LED, the Atmo battery LED, and then the Atmo battery. As you can see, there's definitely, um, it's definitely smart to <laughs> label everything. It would be really hard to not. And that uh, goes in roughly alphabetical order. Uh, then this computer needs to then connect to the purple network. Uh, all of the connections here are temporary. Once we have everything written, uh, we can strip out these cables. So this cable right here is, is a temporary cable. I'm just grabbing it from the closest uh, port. Alright, through a corner and then a regular corner. Done. Okay, so Atmo LED IC housing, good. And put my cables away. And we are going to export. Now the only issue with this is all of the color sets are to two. Uh, so I believe if done correctly, uh, those will turn green and not stay purple. And we'll have to pick the right color for that. Uh, so now, if we turn this housing on, everything seems to work. Um, but of course they turned green. So what we need to do is go into our little program here, and I believe it's purple is 8, if I recall correctly, and export that. Nope, that's not the right color. What was it, 9? Oh god, uh, guess a game. Alright, someone in my Discord posted all of the colors, I just need to find that comment. I am ill-prepared for this, sorry. Uh... Trying to find all of the colors. I guess I could just do the guessing game if I really need to. Let's see. 
here is the data network codes. Okay, cool. Let's grab that. So, data network colors, purple is 11. All right, let's edit this and see if the wiki is up to date. Color set 11, export. Yes, good. All right, turn that computer off. Strip out all this temporary cabling. Combine my stacks of cables. And uh, how to check if that's running. So we're at 862. If I turn off this monitor, it should drop. Yes, it did. And it dropped by 50. So that is all up and running. Um, and then, of course, because it's nighttime, we'll see the Atmo battery drop as well. You can also confirm this with your network analyzer. So if you want to do uh, confirm with the network analyzer, you grab your network analyzer cartridge and your uh, little handheld tablet. And if I just go and check here, uh, actual 862, 862, and then potential, oh, well, it's averaging. The, uh, no, the potential should be here. Yeah, 3.53 uh, megawatts. Well, I think it just dropped. 3.52 megawatts. Yep, that's up to date. The reason you have to do this, if you're wondering, is because um, because LEDs will just hold whatever's last written to them. Um, so you can have LEDs like this uh, have some sort of data that's outdated if, let's say, I turn off this, this circuit housing... Uh, these keep the same numbers and won't update. Uh, proof of that would be if I flick this off, it won't drop by 50. Right? Yep. It's still 862, not uh, not what it should be. Um, and that's... So you do have to confirm to make sure it's, like, live and working. But there you go. That is both um, Vitals and Atmo on IC. And, yeah, it's a lot cleaner. Clearly a lot cleaner. Um, I still have a little bit of jumble of cables, but it's pretty obvious what the cables do. So purple is power and data to Atmo. The heavy purple is going to the uh, tr APCs and then tr transformers. The uh, green is the vitals power and data. And then the heavy green is to the APCs and transformer. Uh, makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. And then um, the next thing I was going to work on would be to start to work towards uh, heating and cooling. Um, I think we will have the cables for that be blue. Uh, that was the suggestion because, of course, most of what we're going to need to do is cool and not heat. Are these blue? Are they? Okay, yeah, they're blue. They, they kind of look purple in my belt, but no, they're blue. I guess I could have just read the color of the paint. Um, and I believe what we're going to do is have each floor sort of on its own system. Because each floor will have its own requirements. So we have to decide exactly where we put the heat. So if we take a look at this network, this is the, um, this is the intakes here. Uh, where we're going to uh, pull air from the base. And these are the outputs. So the output air is going to immediately hit the heaters, and the gas sensor is pretty close to it. Now this might require a lot of tweaking, but um, I'll, I will continue with that sort of logic there. Uh, so what that means is we need to go over to our pipe bender, and let's first work on heat. Heat is real simple. Uh, heaters are just electric. They require a lot of power, um, but... All they all their only inputs is just a little bit of a uh, just a little bit of uh, one power cable, whereas cooling is a little bit different. The other issue I have with cooling is the coolant I'd like to use, which is pollutant. I don't have a lot of, and we'll need to make that cooling or coolant um, probably through furnace capture. I'm not going to be able to um, to get it any other way. Not easily, at least. All right, so the idea was to have right in the corners there my heaters. Now, heaters and cool coolers do make some noise. Oh, 
I need an ankle grinder. I kind of wanted to get rid of the um, the doors here. Uh, no, I, I welded it. I'll just leave it. Uh, so I think... Hmm. Parts of me thinks that two heaters per floor is going to very, very slowly heat everything up. But uh, that might be fine. Uh, volatiles. Water. So I do have a little bit of pollutants. Actually, I have a... I have an okay amount of pollutants. So this khaki or olive, I forget what color that is, that is where our uh, pollutants are going to come from. It looks like our... Oh. All oh, these filters. Oh, the filters turned off because um, I'm doing batch filtering. That's right. I forgot about that. To just save on the... Uh, uh, to save on the filter life. And that's that's a that's a pretty smart way of doing your filtering. Uh, so let's see, this cable, this pipe has. We'll wait until it has about zero, or not about zero, but literally exactly zero, or eighteen or whatever it will be, eighteen PA, something like that. All right, this is almost fully filtered. All right, there we go. Now I can turn off all these filters. Uh, it's not that the filters require uh, power. It's that um, it's that uh, uses up the f filter life while you're filtering. All right, so now we've filtered out more of the gas in our intake pipes, and that that's good. And it put some more pressure back into CO2. I'm not really worried about the amount of CO2 I'm going to have. Okay, so I digress. Um, Heaters. So we're setting up a heater network, and wall heaters take an insane amount of power. So the issue is, a lot of them will help to regulate uh, temperature quickly, uh, but they will also draw power and blow out your network pretty quickly as well. So the issue here is, if I really, really want a system that heats and cools quickly... Uh, what I might need to do is to put all of my wall heaters um, on a heavy cable network because you can only have up to, really you can only have like four wall heaters on a small cable network because each one of these can can draw a uh, thousand joules per tick or a thousand watts. Uh, so five wall heaters is enough to blow out small cables or regular cables, um, which means I think... For the last two batteries I have up there, one is going to be for heat. Or, you know, I could do heat and cooling mm, sort of separate. I think I'll, I think that's what I'm going to do, just to make it a little bit simple. Um, so I do have some heavy cables in my inventory. And what I'm going to need to do is to try to keep uh, the heaters as close to the heat battery as possible so that I don't have to run too many heavy cables. Uh, this also means that the transformer will be a little bit different uh, than transformers in the past. Um, I, obviously, a small transformer is not going to be sufficient to keep these heaters from blowing out my network entirely. So what we're going to be looking at is something like this. We have heavy cables that run from the heaters up to the output of this station battery. And this will be the heat battery, or the uh, the AC battery. Now, um, this battery will probably drain often. But uh, that's just something we're going to have to run into uh, while we set this network up. And I think what I will do here is... Uh, whatever battery this is for, it's going to have to work around heat and cooling. Uh, because... Because of the expense of all these heavy cables, although I have plenty of resources to make more, I like to not design wastefully. Um, the small cables that are coming off of this battery will have to just accommodate for all this, these heavy cables. Alright, so if I want to grab this cable, I think it's easiest if I corner around it. And I think what I'll do is I'll just have uh, two heaters per floor. And... 
then I'll also have to set up logic to run those heaters only when needed. Um, so that's another little level of complication. Each floor might need its own logic or um, I'll have to write a program to uh, to take them take uh, each each floor's gas sensors input um, and then write to the wall heaters or write to a batch writer that writes to the wall heaters. I think that's probably the way to go. Uh, but I digress. So that is all of the uh, the heavy cables that I had um, for now. Let's get some more. Gold and copper, and I put all my gold and copper in here, didn't I? There's my copper, there's my gold. Looks like I'm pretty low on copper. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, everything else that I'm not using, the electrum and solder, I'm going to put away. Uh, let's go ahead and... Okay, I already had copper in there. One... There we go. What's in here? Just golden copper. What I think I'm going to do is start to um, put all of my ingots that I'm not currently using uh, in the cabinet here so I don't have to go fishing for them in the uh, benches. That will, that will be uh, helpful, I think. Now, I don't have a stacker, uh, so a stacker would allow me to combine ingots um, so that I could have one stack of iron. Because right now, as you can see, I have, you know, individually stacked iron. And a stacker, what it does is just combines stacks, um, which is honestly pretty handy. I'm just combining all the, oh, all of the, I'll just sort of do the organization here. All the rare resources I'll put up top. Probably don't need a... Uh... So I have a lot of individually stacked irons here, as you can see. And then some steels. I have a glob of unprocessed iron, I think that is. Uh, I'm still smelting. Yeah, I'm pretty low on copper. What's in here? Oh, there's a lot of copper in here. You know what? I just realized I have a lot of steel. Uh, it also helps to combine everything so you get a proper inventory of what you have. Uh, so I have a ton of steel, but I don't have a lot of gold. So gold is going to be the next thing I have to mine for. But I'm attempting to do all my mining off camera so as to not bore you all to death. Yeah, I have 76 gold. I'll be okay. Uh, so now all of my materials are, ooh, except for lead, are basically put away. Lead is something you're just not going to use a lot of. Um, unless you're constantly breaking your, like, hard suits. But if you're constantly breaking your hard suits, um, don't. <laughs> I haven't even chipped my hard suit so far. Alright, so, uh, the heavy cables... Let's turn my lights on. So the heavy cables from the heaters on the bottom floor, I'm going to need to add heaters up here as well. So I have to pick basically where my heaters should go. I should probably create uh, four more heaters. So let's go ahead and queue those up. And I'll need to move some materials around. So wall heaters, I need iron, gold, copper. Let's grab it. There's my copper, there's my gold, and iron is over here. We'll just grab... Two little stacks of it. So at most, uh, this heating network will only draw 6K. Uh, the reason why I don't want it drawing any more than 6K, although the heavy cables, of course, can handle up to 99 heaters, uh, I don't want to drain the battery so quickly. I want solar to be able to somewhat replenish the amount that I'm drawing from the heaters. So uh, these heaters, I'm probably going to hide. Let's see, does that block? No, I don't know if that's really the wisest spot. 
going to have to think about this. I haven't really brainstormed perfect heater placement. I guess I could put it on the ceiling. Because uh, I'm not really using that spot. So I'll put one there. And one there. Or those are my heaters for that floor. And then my top floor, which is the Atmo floor. Uh, I'm going to have... For now... Hmm. I think I want the heaters... Probably right next to the inflow, but that means I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of a quick welding. So let me do that quick welding now. I'm going to theft some of the materials here. And quick weld this. And this. And we'll put our heaters down here. What I think I'm going to have right above this vent and above these heaters is rows of plants. So you're not really going to see this heater. Uh, I don't want to put it on the roof because, of course, I don't want to block the. Uh, I don't want to block anything. Um, I'll put these welding welds back, even though it doesn't really need to be solid. All right, so now I know at least where my heaters are going to go. Let's go over here and take the materials back: copper, gold. And I stuck all of my iron in there to combine it into one big stack. And I can actually do that. Uh, you know, you don't need a stacker. You need a stacker for some things. But uh, you can combine stacks in your crafting units too. So there we go. Now we have like properly small stacks of stuff. Uh, let's keep making those heavy cables. I'm not exactly sure how many I'm going to need. But I'll put my regular cable coils there. Enjoy my fries. Now, another thing about the stacker is um, soy oil, once your stack of soy oil is small, will use more soy oil like than um, the smaller the stack. It's kind of like a... I don't know if it's a bug or not, but um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, uh, you can Google it, but basically, you should keep soy oil in one large stack than a bunch of small stacks, because if it's in a bunch of small stacks, you end up using more of it to make whatever you're trying to make. Um, if I'm describing this poorly, it's because I don't really understand the bug myself, but this is what I've been told. Okay, so let's go ahead and wire up the remainder of my um, stuff here. So, we're going to want to run a cable... It's pretty easy to pick up um, this cable here to the heater. And then we'll run a cable up the corner. I did say I wanted to avoid corners, but I think heavy cables are wide enough that you'll see them in the... F oh, no, you might not see them in the frames. Uh, Alright, I will avoid running them into the corners then. So this should be a three-way corner. Yep. That heater is plugged in. And none of these heaters will work until things are actually pressurized. Um, heaters are not set up to uh, um, work in vacuum. They just won't draw power. They won't operate at all. And bring this back to the wall. I should use... Alright, there we go. Alright, so that wall heater's plugged in, and you can tell it's plugged in by the fact that it turns on, although although red, it's not drawing power. It's, it's lying to you. Uh, so this heater is a little bit harder to, to run power to, because it is very much stuck in the corner of a lot of spots that, um, that have cables running. So what I'm going to do is just run a cable along here. I might need to move this cable sometime in the future. Uh, it depends on... I'm obviously don't have lights installed in a lot of the base here. So that's something I'm going to want in the future is a, a nice lit network. And then um, 
I'm going to be running out of heavy cables here pretty soon. But uh, it's going to look something like this. And then we'll print up some more heavy cables. Uh, maybe that should curve to the wall. I should probably keep one so that we don't have to keep repainting. Let's go and crank some more out. So what we're going to have here is um, obviously the battery output shouldn't go straight to the heaters. It needs to go through APCs and transformers. Um, so a lot of the initial network that I've already plopped down is going to have to change a little bit. And then, again, we're going to monitor it uh, properly with the LEDs. So we'll have to do another IC housing and uh, that jazz. But the thing is, I'm way... Well, not way, but I'm, I'm definitely over time here. So let me just finish off um, wiring up the last heater. And then I'll have to pick up where I left off next episode. Uh, let's hope nine is enough. Where were you we going with this? We had nine. I don't think it's going to be enough. Maybe. I don't know. Man, I love my jetpack. This construction project would be so much harder without one. All right. Run the cable. Oh, yes. Nine will be enough. I just need my wire cutters. All right. So now each heater is uh, plugged in, uh, albeit off. And the way to tell if everything is plugged in correctly, uh, one quick way is to turn them all on, but another quick way is to just grab your um, your network analyzer in your cartridge here and see what's on the network. So if I turn this on, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna have to name those uh, like like Atmo heater one, Atmo heater two, so on and so forth, uh, so that um, so that I know, you know, logic-wise, I know which ones I'm controlling. All right, guys. Well, I wanted to have a big thank you to Catharsis and Randy for helping with the IC logic stuff. So I didn't have to write it myself. Not that I couldn't, but uh, it really, really is helpful when you guys chip in like that. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me about this episode, uh, drop me a line. I do hope that it has been illuminating for you. Uh, about how IC logic has worked. I did do solar tracking on IC logic, but this little IC logic was very simple program and should be it should make more sense to people that don't know MIPS the coding language that is used MIPS is not unique to stationers it's actually a like a, a simple programming language all right guys well I'll have to catch you all later thank you for watching adios